ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to talk about global warming. It's been in the news recently, and because of what scientists call global warming, they predict a big freeze, an ice age, for Europe and northern North America. Gary Stearman is here with the story. And JR, it's being called the big freeze. Now, uh, before you laugh, <laughs> just listen to this. Uh, in the January 25th, 2004, UK Independent published all over uh, the United Kingdom and Europe, uh, this sentence was, uh, was a front page news item, and I quote, Britain is likely to be plunged into an ice age within our lifetime by global warming. New research, uh, research suggests. A study which is being taken seriously by top government officials has uncovered a change of remarkable amplitude in the circulation of the waters of the North Atlantic. Well, this raises a lot of questions. An ice age? Global warming? How in the world does global warming fit together with an ice age? And do you believe in global warming? Well, we're going to be talking about that and about some interesting uh, prophetic notes on today's Prophecy in the News. Okay, Gary, let's, uh, let's find out exactly why they are saying that a big freeze is coming to England and to Northern Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, it all has to do with the uh, polar ice cap melting, doesn't it? <clears throat> it does. And JR, before we go uh, any further on that, I think everybody has heard about global warming. Some people scoff at it. Uh, some people say, well, it's politics. Uh, some scientists say, well, there's no such thing as global warming. Uh, but JR, they're trying, what the, the, the uh, climatologists are trying to do today is make sense of the temperature changes they're seeing. And, and they're trying to understand why it is that the ice is melting both at the South Pole and the North Pole. And there is still confusion about whether the temperature is rising that much in the oceans. But one thing's sure, the ice is disappearing at the South Pole and at the North Pole. And JR, because of that, the water at the poles or in the region of the poles uh, is being infused. That is, the seawater is being infused from uh, glacial melt, causing the seawater to be less salty near the poles. So fresh water is being dumped into the North Atlantic from the melting glaciers. This fresh water is blocking the flow of salt water from the tropics. Now, please try to get this. As I understand it, the salt water um, sinks and it goes down deep. Yes. And it mm -hmm. takes the uh, mild climate temperatures from the equator and conveys them up around the northern areas, mm -hmm. which provides a mild climate for Great Britain mm -hmm. and Northern Europe. Yes. And uh, I guess uh, also the east coast of uh, Canada and North America. Mm -hmm. But because of the fresh water blocking this flow, this conveyor of salt water, warm tropical waters up through the North Sea, it's going to turn uh, Europe and Great Britain into frozen tundra one of these days. In <laughs> fact, according to Woodhull, uh, Oceanographic Institute, uh, this is so serious, uh, there, could, there could be an ice age um, within, the eight, uh, within eight years. Within eight years and maybe uh, even sooner than that. <clears throat> In fact, I'm holding a reprint of an article uh, here from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, a very prestigious institution, and they are constantly researching currents, oceanic flow, their reports are used by uh, merchant seamen the wor world over. But they need to be able to predict weather, ocean currents, etc., <clears throat> for their uh, Atlantic crossings, uh, for crossings in other parts of the, of the sea. But, but, but I'm holding this article, uh, which is entitled, Abrupt Climate Change, Should We Be Worried? by Robert uh, B. Gagosian of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. And JR, it's talking about this very thing. Uh, the, the ocean conveyor uh, takes water from the equator, which is very warm, 
uh, the water there has been exposed to, to sunlight, which is causing the surface water to evaporate, become saltier and warmer. It flows up through the Bahamas along the east coast of the United States uh, and then turns uh, northeast across Greenland and Iceland. And that warm, salty water reaches England and Europe, and Scandinavia, by the way. And there, uh, it releases its heat. And because it's very dense, salty water, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean, flows back to the equator, and the whole cycle starts all over again. Well, uh, because of the freshening water, uh, really since the 1960s, this has been observed. And because of the freshening water in the North Atlantic, the global conveyor is slowing down. Now, JR, you've got to think about this. Uh, England is on the same latitude as Labrador. Uh, and Labrador is very, very cold. I mean, it, yes. it has tundra uh, in parts of, of its topography. Uh, the experts are saying that if the global conveyor stops, England will become frozen tundra. No farming possible. No farming in Norway, Sweden, uh, Finland. No summer season, no, no vegetable crops. Northern Europe would become a frozen wasteland. And this condition, once it happens, will last for several decades. The implications of this are huge. In fact, it could produce problems with um, agriculture in North America. Absolutely. And can you imagine with uh, frozen tundra everywhere across um, Europe, across Russia, across uh, Canada, uh, across northern United States, no telling how far south it might go, um, a lot of these uh, European and maybe even the United States people are going to be wanting to move south. Ooh. And so uh, it's possible that uh, Africa could be uh, taken over by Europeans or the Middle East or even uh, Mexico and South America could become more populated with uh, Americans. Uh, from the United mm -hmm. States, instead of uh, instead of all those folks south coming north, can you imagine everybody north going south? And oh. it could create a tremendous upheaval in the world economy, in the distribution of food, um, and in the uh, plan for world government. Well, Jr., what what amazes me is when you stop and think about this. Imagine for a moment that the infrastructures of northern Europe are frozen. We're talking about natural gas. Electric power will be taxed to the maximum because uh, there would me never be a warm-up. Uh, people would be using electricity for heating. They'd be using gas. The water systems, which are just a few feet or a few inches below the surface, they're saying now, if this happened, it would freeze up the water systems. People would have no fresh water. Uh, the electricity would be at a premium. There would be no fresh food, no summer truck gardens uh, in France in Germany. Uh, if, and they grow a lot of uh, summer produce, even in Scandinavia. That would stop. People would be starved. They would be freezing in the dark. And JR, can you imagine the political ramifications of this? Yeah. These things cause wars. wars. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a thousand years ago, Greenland was uh, very mild, evidently. And the Norse uh, people uh, settled uh, many communities in Greenland, but today those same ancient cities are now under 500 feet of ice. They are under 500 feet of ice. Uh, already Greenland has experienced the kind of t the cooling that we're talking about for all of Europe. Uh, I want to read for a moment from, from Second Peter because there's a, a, an important point to be made, and that is this. Peter says in, in Second Peter uh, 3, 3, knowing this first, that there shall come out in the last days scoffers walking after their, their own lusts and saying, where's the promise of his coming? Well, in this context, Peter goes on to say in verse 5, for this they are willingly ignorant of, that, the, that by the word of God the heavens were of old in the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Now he's talking about the flood of Noah. Mm -hmm. That cat catastrophic flood uh, released uh, stratospheric uh, sub-freezing temperatures. It created the polar caps, and, and that was, uh, what, 4,500 years ago. Ever since that time, those polar caps have been diminishing. And today we're seeing the last remnants of the old 
ice age, quote unquote, that was precipitated by the flood of Noah. Geologists today deny that there ever was a flood of Noah. Yes. And so they have come up with this global warming motif to explain what they're seeing. They're blaming um, greenhouse uh, gases. Yes. They're blaming uh, automobiles and factories and pollution of all kinds, Freon mm -hmm. and so on. But the truth of the matter is they're just simply denying that there was a flood and the world been warming up ever since the flood was over. That's right. <laughs> Fascinating. It is. Now, if you'll notice, most of the uh, land masses of this world are above the equator on the north side of the, of the planet. Yes. So if we have a global warming on the north side of the planet, it's going to tremendously affect population growth yeah. and population centers. Well, uh, we'll talk about that more when we come back in just a moment. Gary Stearman has written an article for our March edition of our magazine, Prophecy in the News, called The Big Freeze. Gary, you have a globe there. Show us how mm -hmm. the ocean conveys this water. Uh, J.R., this is most fascinating, and we have to remember that the basic premise is that water creates climate <clears throat> on our planet. Uh, we're talking about the global conveyor uh, beginning with, with superheated water, salty water that flows up uh, past the east coast of the United States, uh, past uh, Nova Scotia, and that from there it turns uh, northeast, flows past Greenland, Iceland, and then uh, through the straits uh, where the Faroe Islands are located, it, uh, it warms uh, the United Kingdom, it warms Norway, Sweden, France, Germany, and by the way, uh, the global conveyor even has implications as far east as the breadbasket of Russia where they grow grain. Now, the conveyor works by circulating water clockwise around the Atlantic Basin, the water having dropped its heat up here then flows back to the equator for another cycle. But J.R., what's fascinating is that uh, England right here is on the same latitude as Newfoundland uh, and Labrador. Here's Goose Bay, Labrador. Everybody knows Goose Bay, Labrador is permafrost. It's a place you can't grow crops. And if you go straight to the east, you come to Edinburgh, Scotland, where they now are able to grow crops. If the global conveyor stopped, so would crop, uh, crops stop in England. And if you'll notice, most of the uh, countries there are above the equator. Go ahead and point that out. Go yes. around, around the globe and show us. Mm -hmm. Uh, where most of the world lives today. That's right. Going east from the United States, we find that we're on the same level, basically, as North Africa uh, in the United States. And the land masses that you find on the globe are north of the equator. Uh, the the uh, Russia, Russia, Mongolia, China, India, uh, all of this land, and most of the land mass, is north of the equator, including the United States. And so the implications of this will affect the entire uh, northern hemisphere, J.R. Uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute is telling us uh, that we could see drought in the United States, even if we didn't see massive cooling. Uh, we could see crippling droughts in, in the breadbasket of the United States. And according to uh, Peter, in the last days, there would be people who would be denying that there was a flood. Yes. And figuring, figuring out some reason why the world's in the shape that it's in. That's a fulfillment of the prophecy in Peter. Absolutely. And then let's go over to Job, Gary, mm -hmm. and tell us about the prophecy you found there in Job about this. Now, now this is most interesting because the, the Lord ex is talking to Job um, and explaining to Job that how far above his understanding uh, the natural world and the functions of the natural world happen to be. And he says in Job 38, 16, Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? With a rhetorical question. Of course Job hasn't. Uh, or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? In other words, God's saying, I understand the ocean currents. The, I, the, the conveyor of the ocean. The conveyor of the ocean. And how the salt water is conveyed down deep yes. and moves the, um, cli the mild climate temperatures up toward the north. Right. Fascinating. That's what J God is talking to Job about. He's here. explaining to Job, I control the natural systems. And then in Job 38, 22, and 23, uh, we find something interesting. 
Uh, he asks Job, hast thou uh, entered into the treasuries or of the snow? It's treasures in the King James. It means treasuries, really. Or hast thou uh, seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? Now, that's really fascinating, isn't it, J.R.? We're talking end time here. End time. In fact, chapter 38 of Job is an end times prophecy. Mm -hmm. Job is talking to God, and God is telling him of various things that Job doesn't understand that will come to pass in the last days. For example, he says here in verse 13 that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Mm -hmm. That's the end of days, you Absolutely. see, when, when the Lord judges the wicked. And uh, in fact, in the Hebrew, the word wicked here has the little letter ein, which is raised up above the level of the line. And then on the next verse, it is turned as clay to the seal. And verse 15, and from the wicked, their light is withholden. So again, for the second time, the ein is lifted up mm -hmm. in the word wicked, showing that God is going to snatch the wicked out of this world, going to get rid of them and, and create a world government with the Messiah as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And so in this setting, the Lord asks Job, have you seen my treasuries of snow? Have you seen my treasuries of hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble? Jared, that's the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the great tribulation, mm -hmm. suggesting that there may be a massive cold event that precipitates some of the events of the tribulation. Now that is worth talking about. So let's talk about Russia now. And if Russia and Europe were to get into this trouble, they would want to find some warm weather further south, wouldn't they? J.R., if this happened, uh, uh, we're looking at uh, Oslo, Norway. Uh, uh, we're looking at, uh, uh, at Sweden. We're looking at Denmark, uh, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Britain. We're looking at France and Germany. Uh, all of these countries would suddenly lose their ability to grow crops. There would be starvation. There would have to be a, a massive movement just to keep these people alive. And then moving on uh, eastward into Russia, the breadbasket of Russia would fail. The wheat lands, which are already marginal because of the climate there, if it turns just a tiny bit colder, they can't grow wheat. Uh, J.R., I believe that could precipitate a geopolitical revolution I think these people might even get their heads together and say, you know, we need to do something about this. We need to move south where it's warmer uh, so that we can feed our people. Well, if the cities are under 500 feet of ice, <laughs> they wouldn't have any choice. That's right. They would have to move south. And of course, even the farmland of Northern America, the great wheat uh, breadbasket of America, uh, which supplies most of the world, I guess, with wheat, mm -hmm. uh, would uh, greatly be curtailed if this uh, happens. And according to Woodhull Institute, they're a very prestigious group. Yes. They're the people, you know, who sent the, uh, um, the robot down to take pictures of the Titanic wreckage at the bottom of the North Sea. And uh, they are saying that since 1960, they have noticed and, and have charted this uh, freshening of the water, mm -hmm. and, and uh, they have graphs and charts that show that it is definitely getting colder and colder and colder mm -hmm. uh, because of this, and yeah. the fresh water uh, is, is just flooding the northern, uh, the North Sea and the northern Atlantic. And indeed, they claim that within the next eight years, the world is going to face an ice age. And by the way, they speak of a phenomenon called the flip. Uh, just the word flip, F-L-I-P, in, in which they've been watching the graphs generally decline you know, on a more or less steady downward trend. They're saying that when, when conditions reach a certain point, the climate could flip like a, like a light switch. And, and within literally weeks, what we're talking about could happen. And J.R., when I read Ezekiel 38, I have new eyes to understand this because here is Gog, Russia with an evil thought saying, we're going to go to the south, and, and we're going to ally ourselves with Persia, Ethiopia, Libya. These are countries to the south. Gomer, which is the Germanic people with all his bands, the house of Togarma of the north quarters. And J.R., they all come from the north parts, and they go south. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, people, students of Bible prophecy have asked for years, what is the, the precipitating factor that causes Gog 
to move southward. Well, maybe we have a clue now. Indeed. You know, when you go to the southern, the most southern part of the Soviet Union, it's still above the Great Lakes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and so the Soviet Union, you know, even though it's a great landmass, is mostly frozen tundra. It's up there with the, with the Hudson Bay and with the a Alaska. In just a, in the concluding seconds, I want to reiterate something. People at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution are the most prestigious climatologists on the face of the earth. And when they suggest things like this, it's not to be taken lightly. It's entirely possible then that within the next few years, as the world moves toward world government, that uh, they will be, uh, have an impetus there because of the climate dropping severely. Mm. We're talking uh, frozen tundra here in Europe. So yes. uh, keep your eyes on the news and find out what's happening. We'll be back in just a moment. You know, Gary, our government has been discussing uh, opening up the borders all the way from Canada to Argentina mm. and uh, forming a new government of the Western Hemisphere similar to the European Union. In fact, uh, a uh, legislation called the FTAA, um, Free Trade Area of the Americas, uh, is proposing this and it could become law within the next year or so. Mm. And uh, this may be one of the reasons, because we, we're looking south. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, and could it be that our experts all, are already thinking ahead and hoping that we can move to warmer climes? Well, stay tuned. I tell you, Jesus is coming soon. The world cannot continue as it is today. Dramatic things are happening. Yes. And if you want to have eternal life, you need to trust in Jesus Christ as your personal savior. This is J.R. Church and Gary Stimmon. Until next time, keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported ministry sponsored by our many friends across America and in your area. For your gift of $10, you can receive a special edition of our current program on audio tape, or for a gift of $20, we'll send you our programs on videotape. For either order, call the 800 number on your screen right now.